Hi guys, welcome to Nurse Howie, and this is going to be a crash course on taking care of your patient who is on ECMO and is COVID positive. So caring for a COVID ECMO patient is very daunting, especially if it's your first time. You know, caring for a COVID patient is hard enough, but now you have to take care of a patient that's under ECMO. But what does ECMO mean? ECMO means the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, which is basically a bypass to help your patients recover while their lungs are bypassed and helping their lungs recover in the process. So hopefully that they can come out of the COVID without too much damage. Now, it may seem daunting to have to take care of a COVID patient in the ICU, let alone an ECMO patient. But that's why I've made this video, and it's not gonna be a long video for now, but I'll come up with a, another video to talk about more of the details of caring for an ECMO patient. But for right now, let's say for example, you're about to take care of an ECMO patient, you don't have enough staff, and they picked you, or you volunteered. This is what you need to know. A few things. Uh, it's a combination of research that I've gathered along with my own personal experience. But number one, the first thing to do is not panic. Now you got this. If you can take care of an ICU patient, let alone two ICU patients, you can take care of a COVID ECMO patient. You just have to be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more observant, um, and check for any loose connections, usually by doing like a systematic assessment. And don't fall back on checking to make sure that everything is there and everything is closed and everything is flowing well. Otherwise, you might come up with more trouble than you're able to. It's better to prevent these troubles from happening before it becomes way too worse by just doing a set of preventive assessments and a little bit of cleaning up and making sure that the patient is okay. So first thing to do, number one, is not panic. Number two, remember that it's still just an ICU patient, but with more cords. So a VV ECMO patient are usually meaning that, that we use a veins to vein system of tubes to be able to bypass the lungs and create a circulation uh, between the vein in the femoral vein and the vein in the right internal uh, jug jugular. So this is VV ECMO and where we use the vein from the femoral vein to the right internal jugular vein usually but just so you know this is almost kind of like dialysis but not quite and also you still have to do CPR just like dialysis unlike VA ECMO and VV ECMO you do have to do CPR if your patient does have a cardiac arrest now number three most of the patients are young and relatively healthy okay so you can feel a little bit better knowing that the patient is not going to crash from multiple organ disease right away or you know the patient is very medically complex the short of the matter is is that the patient has covid and usually the patient is less than 50 years old so that you can have some reassurance that their heart will react relatively quickly um, for example levo should work immediately uh, just in case your patient's map starts to fall which is a mean arterial pressure there is actually a pretty strict inclusion exclusion criteria for selecting COVID ECMO patients. Um, it's not just selected by our cardiothoracic surgeon, but it's also selected by a panel of doctors um, and physicians and social workers and um, nurses that all decide whether or not this patient <coughs> excuse me, is actually a good candidate for ECMO. And then that's where you come in. So the patient's already been through a rigorous selection. Now, they don't select patients that have multiple comorbidities, for example, just badly damaged lungs, usually from COVID. Now, if you have one in front of you, then it only has been a couple of weeks. You can bet that the patient is relatively healthy except for the COVID part. Now, look to see if the patient has already had multiple organ disease. Um, and usually they shouldn't, but if they do, you can start keeping an eye on it. You still have to do your regular intensive care unit nursing and making sure that you're monitoring how the ba patient's body is doing um, inside and out uh, as well as also seeing how long they've been under ECMO usually the longer the patient is under ECMO the worse their prognosis is so um, just start to watch out for that now that will give you an idea of how tough or easy that this ECMO patient will be to manage um, with any luck, maybe you'll have a relatively new ECMO COVID patient and um, if you just kind of watch 
and monitor their vital signs uh, pretty standardly you should do pretty much you should do pretty okay just remember to make sure that you do an assessment of the patient including the cords that come out of the vein to vein ECMO and make sure that everything is not kinked and especially nothing is disconnected okay number four nevertheless of all the things you have to think about with getting a new ECMO patient you should just have the one ECMO patient it should be a one-to-one -one ratio just you and the ECMO patient of course you're gonna have a team of perfusionists and the cardiothoracic surgeons as well as the attending physician for the ICU usually an intensivist or pulmonologist or what have you and um, you'll have a team basically what I'm saying is that you won't be alone now having another patient to take care of could be dangerous so they want you to just stay with one patient one ECMO COVID patient anyway um, it's more dangerous than managing two sick ICU patients if something goes wrong but if everything goes right it gets to be actually pretty um, I don't want to say easy but not as daunting as it feels in the beginning and it's because of what you may think it's not really the cardiac neuro or the respiratory that's the problem it's the fact that your patient may bleed out exsanguinate and very very quickly so that's because the patient has multiple venous veno venous vein vein large lines the size of garden hoses that has multiple um, I'm sorry the size of garden hoses that attach to the femoral vein and then it goes to the ECMO machine circulator and then it gets reperfused back into the right internal jugular vein of the neck number five ECMO patients are also hard to manage with their sedation now that's the tricky part because Usually ICU patients are hard to manage with, with their sedation anyway because they don't talk to you and if they don't have good circulation or perfusion, you kind of end up having to sedate them more and more and more to the point of maybe having to paralyze them. Well, ECMO patients aren't any different. They're also a bit challenging when it comes to sedation. So that's because there's, an, there's large ECMO lines that make it hard to maintain a serum level of drugs enough to sedate the patient. So it changes the pharmacodynamics and hemodynamics of the drug like propofol and Presidex to keep patients in a medically induced coma. Okay, for the second part of this video, I just want to go over a couple of very, very simple uh, terminologies that will be pertinent to your patient who is an ECMO COVID patient. So cannulation sites, most of these sites are femoral artery and vein, as I've mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're going to be taking care of a COVID ECMO patient, and that's usually VV, at least in our facility. Uh, the reason why is because it's readily apparent based on their cannulation sites whether a patient is VV or VA. So generally speaking, VA ECMO can assume circulatory and ventilator function, while VV ECMO is unable to provide circulatory function. But that's fine. Usually I said our patients that are ECMO COVID qualified are usually less than 50 and they usually have good hearts. What the problem is, is that we need to bypass and provide oxygen function without having to actually use the lungs. So we're giving VV ECMO in order to give the patients that have COVID a chance to rest their lungs. Flow is one of the first terminologies. This is the liters per minute of blood flow that the ECMO circuitry is generating. Now, a normal cardiac output, you usually want between four and eight liters per minute, but some patients have no flow at all, and they rely completely on ECMO. That's a pretty sick patient. But some patients also are generating low levels of cardiac flow, but it must be balanced against the patient's native flow and the machine's uh, circulatory, circulatory flow. So here's a good explanation of the mixing cloud that forms when native flow meets ECMO flow. I'll put a link in the video in the corner above so you can see. Uh, RPM is the pump speed of the ECMO circuit. It's changing the, the revolutions per minute that has an impact on the flow. Now there's also inflow and outflow pressures. And again, your perfusionist should be monitoring this. Um, and they'll only just let you know if there's a problem. You can also hear it because there's an alarm. But these values, the inflow and outflow pressures, represent the pressures of the inflow and outflow cannulas. Knowing the difference between these may be helpful. Now high inflow pressures can cause suction events. When the cannula suctions against the inside of the vessel, causing a drastic drop in flow. For me, in my experience, if the, if the, the cannulations, the, the hoses aren't kinked, 
then this might be the other reason. Um, you might have a cannula inside the vein, let's say you're looking at it from the side view, and the tip of the cannula might be sucking and hitting the wall of the vein, uh, decreasing the suctioning power of the ECMO, and the ECMO machine will pick up on that, and you will get alarms. But the other, w the other troubleshooting that I see is that the cannulation lines or just the ECMO lines are usually folded up. Either the patient's leaning on it with their neck or it's usually against uh, the groin uh, if the patient is bending too much on the bed. So just watch your, your lines and cannulations and um, the hoses and make sure that they're not kicked. You can usually put like a gauze or some kind of uh, jerry rig or a tissue, not tissue, but like a towel just to make sure that it's not bending too much and creating a kink and causing a drastic um, decrease in the flow. Sweep and FiO2. Sweep is a setting that controls how much CO2 the ECMO machine removes from the blood. And that's how we're helping these COVID ECMO patients, COVID VV ECMO patients recover. Now our system some has two dials. Ours usually, you can see it, it looks similar to how some hospitals that I've traveled to have with their high flow nasal cannula. So, but it's not a nasal cannula. This is definitely an ECMO machine. So the system has two dials that control sweep, one for larger adjustments and one for fine tuning. Right next to the sweep control is the oxygen mixer, which controls the FiO2. So you've got your sweep and your FiO2. Now obtaining optimal oxygen saturations, PaO2 and PCO2 levels is a balance between the ventilator and the ECMO machinery. And that's what your respiratory therapist, don't forget, that they're part of the team, they're integral in getting the ABGs and also reporting them to the intensivist as well as the cardiothoracic surgeon so they can tell the perfusionist to adjust how much and how often that they need to change the machine in order to make sure that there's a natural flow and there's a good balance as far as ABGs go. Anticoagulation, of course, with so much blood circulation out of the body and back in, you're gonna have a lot of anticoagulation um, medications given to the patient as well as problems that go along with that. So running high volumes of blood through the artificial circuitry increases the probability of a thromboembolism, a clot. So patients must be anticoagulated and they're anticoagulated heavily. Now this is often done with heparin or another drip but with concomitant monitoring uh, based on your institution's protocol. So definitely your pharmacist should be involved and they should be following that. Antibiotics. Uh, many of our ICU patients have prophylactic antibiotics, but foreign bodies can be a problem. So patients have to stay on ECMO for weeks or months, and infection is always a concern. So consider starting the patient on empirical antibiotics if they haven't been on any other specific antibiotics already. Um, other things to consider, the ventilator. Don't forget, your VV ECMO patient still is ventilated. Not all ECMO patients are on a ventilator, but most likely your COVID ECMO patients are. But those who are requiring balanced ventilator setting with settings with ECMO uh, provide appropriate oxygenation and ventilation. Um, a problem that I had with a perfusionist who uh, was playing with a sweep and FiO2 wasn't telling me what was going on. And I ended up having to try to see what was going on with the patient. So I put in all my PPE, donned all my gear, and I had to um, help the patient by increasing the FiO2 all the way to 100% because I didn't know that the perfusionist was actually decreasing the dials down. So having a good communication with your perfusionist is essential. So be nice, introduce yourself, and make sure that you get their phone number in case they need to walk away and you can call them right away. Um, some patients may also have a, a SWAN catheter, a PA catheter. So select patients may have SWAN GANS catheters in place, allowing for continuous monitoring. But just um, you know, make sure that you put that in your, in your monitors up on the screen. Finally, labs such as SVO2 and ABGs can be drawn from both the patient and from the ECMO circuit and compared. This is usually scheduled multiple, multiple times a day. For us, it's about every four to six hours with more frequent checks as needed with any change in clinical status. So pay close attention with the blood gas and work with your respiratory therapist and your perfusionist. Um, so by the time that the cardiothoracic surgeon or the intensivist comes by, you'll be able to have the data ready for them to read and ready for them to adjust, okay? All right, thanks a lot. This is Howie. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to email me. Go to www.nursehowie.com. That's N-U-R-S-E-H-O-W-I-E. -E. I'll put the link in the corner. Or uh, 
comment down below if you want me to answer your questions or if you have any other suggestions for any other videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, bye. See you later and good luck.